What's poppin', y'all? It's the Sound Alchemist, and today we're Brack... Brack? Yeah, I guess we're Brack today. <laughs> today, we are back, and I'm bringing you guys some epicness in the form of fan lore. Now, usually, if you guys want to give us some of your fan lore, like custom chapters, um, that kind of thing, you can send it to us either on our email, one at gmail.com, or over on our Facebook page. Uh, usually, the Facebook page... Um, is a better option because our email gets flooded. <laughs> I mean, yeah, we get a lot of messages on Facebook too, but uh, I'm going to try and focus on fan lore this week because we have a ton. <laughs> We're like so far behind. So uh, with that being said, I decided to go with this one. Um, this it was actually sent to us via YouTube message. Uh, by Spartan A111. Now this was a pretty cool idea, so I decided to cover it. So basically, he sent us a huge comment letting us know about his custom fan-made Primarch and his Legion. So without further ado guys, let's dive into this fan lore. So the name of his Primarch is Dorvanicus. He's currently 30, and his species is that of a human Psyker. Um, he was part of the first founding, the 21st Legion, the Void Riders. He does have psychic abilities, and one of those abilities is called the Dragon's Frost, which he roars out a blast of extremely cold warp ice out of his mouth that freezes his foes solid. He also has the ability of Dragonflight, where he spawns dragon wings made of warp energy to achieve flight of up to 95 miles an hour. But the warp abilities do not end there. He also has the Dragon Claws, which are psychic claws of warp energy that can rip through adamantium like a chain sword cutting through flesh. On top of this, he can communicate uh, with a little show of domination and he can command dragons, along with a superhuman uh, heightened smelling and night vision due to hunting prey during the night. On top of this, he has superhuman strength and apparently he can lift up to two dreadnoughts with his bare hands, guys. This dude is a beast. But even beasts have flaws. He has the genetic defect called the Dragon's Fury. Uh, this defect happens during the greatest of battles where rage just keeps building and building until he goes feral for a short period of time. He has very little self-control in this state and his skin becomes resilient to damage and becomes somewhat scaly with his fingertips turning into razor sharp claws and his pupils dilating and it turns out that he looks very reptilian like in this state. And since we're talking about features, let's talk about his appearance. So he is 10 feet tall, he's got tan skin, silver eyes, black hair, he's got a thick beard, and a 5 o'clock shadow after he was discovered by the Emperor. He also has a sharp jawline, just like his father the Emperor, so watch out, ladies. <laughs> uh, Personality-wise, he's very compassionate and collective, until his genetic flaw kicks in. He likes eating raw meat, and he likes hunting and ripping and burning his prey and his enemies. He dislikes anything that has the color blue. Sorry, Ultramarines. He's not for you. So let's talk about his power armor and his war gear. Now, although he rejected the power armor many times over, complaining that it holds back his mobility and it slows his flight down, uh, so he made the forges of the Adeptus Mechanicus make him special armor. This armor is as strong as the Primarch's powerful armor, but it had to be thinned out a bit, and in return, it enhances his strength and psychic powers 30-fold, guys. That's a lot. He also is able to create a warp bubble around him to protect him from any warp and close combat attacks, as well as longer age attacks. His shoulder pads are shrunken down, his helmet is shaped to resemble that of a dragon skull, and before his armor, he used to wear a tunic and a cape of that of dragon scales, which he wore on underneath his armor, and it offered him high ballistic flame and some protection against plasma weaponry. His armor color scheme is mainly chrome, but it does have a little bit of gold in there. Uh, he's got some black pants, and he's got a shoulder pad with a space marine riding the Void Dragon. Dang, that's just, uh, that's brutal. Show some respect to the Void Dragon, man. Surprisingly, he doesn't like weapons. He prefers to grab and rip apart his enemy to pieces. 
So now that we know about his appearance, his likes, his dislikes, his weaponry, his war gear, let's talk about his bio. Like all of his brother Primarchs born from his DNA of the Emperor, and they were scattered across the galaxy, he was very unpredictable. Um, he was flung 10,000 years into the future, which is the main reason that the Emperor could not find him. And he happened to miss the events of the Great Crusade and the Horus Heresy, as well as other important events that followed. When his incubation pod crashed in an uncharted jungle-like planet in the farthest reaches of the northern sector of the galaxy, he was founded by humans on this planet that was dominated by dragons. A dragon took him in as one of his own kin, and decades later, he became the apex predator to this planet, all the way to the point where even the mightiest dragons would fear him. When a Tau colony tried to settle this planet, he commanded his dragons to wipe out the Tau. Not cool, man. During this battle, a few crisis suits were ripped apart to the point where it looked like a busted can of soup. Man, that's too much, you gotta stop. <laughs> Later at some point, Dorvanicus was discovered by the Ultramarines, but he immediately thought that they were the Tau and he attacked them once again, taking heavy losses. It took many months for the Ultramarines to track him down, but Dorvanicus and his dragons attacked them using ambush tactics as well as hit-and-run attacks along a straightforward assault until Gilliman happened to step in. Gilliman fought Dorvanicus and he managed to hold him down long enough to be sedated. Later, Dorvanicus was taken immediately to Terra, where he was taken to the Imperial Palace to show him the skeletal remains of his father, the Emperor of Mankind. They spoke with one another telepathically, and immediately they recognized one another, and he knelt to the god emperor, showing a sign of respect. Thus began the, began the education in the arts of war, literature, but Dorvanicus rarely speaks. Later on, he was introduced to his legion that has been searching for their lost Primarch for over 10 millennia, and the Imperium has designated the world that he would be in charge of the new homeworld of the Void Raiders. And with that, guys, that concludes the fan lore that was sent to us by Spartan A111, or 111. So thanks for that lore, Spartan. This was a pretty interesting read. I get the feeling that a lot of Warhammer 40k players really like dragons. <laughs> Your Primarch isn't the first one to have dragon-like features, um, but it's, it's, it sounds pretty cool. Um, in my opinion, this is more fantasy-esque, like, uh, it, it's, it's gonna take a, a bit of, um, tinkering your lore if you want it to fit in with the current state of, uh, lore for the Warhammer 40k universe. Um, but it's a cool idea nonetheless. If you guys have any other, uh, types of comments, criticisms, uh, please let Spartan know in the comments down below. Um, but yeah, in my opinion, it's pretty cool. The uh, thought of having that ice breath, that sounds pretty badass. But yeah, if anybody else has their own little fan lore, maybe you've got your own little Eldar um, craft world you guys have come up with, send it over to us on our Facebook page would be the best place, or on our email. And that's, that's pretty much it for today, guys. Just wanted to showcase this little tidbit of fan lore. Um, expect more fan lore coming throughout the week. Uh, but I do want to put out a... Uh, 40 facts video on the Tau 4th and 5th Sphere expansions now that the lore is out. On top of that, uh, the Necron stuff did come out and the Drukhari, I believe is what they're calling themselves now, the Dark Eldar, are coming out this weekend, so I do want to do some videos focusing on that. So expect some more Xenos videos throughout the week, guys, and yeah, that's all I got. I'm the Sound Alchemist, part of One Mind Syndicate, and I'll catch you guys tomorrow. Oh,